Okay, Mark chapter 8 here. We're gonna, I'm going to preach a message called The Leaven of Herod. Trump and the religious right. And, uh, yeah. Um, what's that? Yes, new friends. But I want to talk to you about this because obviously it's current and it's what's going on right now. But I was doing a little bit of studying on that word beware, and I came across this right here, and it kind of went right along with what our times in America are like here politically and the religious right and just I think I think that there's when I tell you who these Herodians are and I explain to you, you to them uh, explain them to you I think what you're going to understand is is that these people are very similar to the Republican Party the religious right what we have going on in America today and I think you're going to be a little bit, sh maybe possibly shocked, but at least it'll give you an understanding that not much has really changed. All right, this same group of Herodians are still around today. All right, and they're still looking for a political messiah. Um, and they haven't found it yet, found him yet. They're going to find him someday, okay? Um, the one they're going to find is going to be the Antichrist, that is going to take over, okay, and that is going to, and they're, they're going to fully support him and back him, which is what, which is what Herod was doing. See, let's pray for a simple goodness. Father, Lord, I pray you bless us now. Help us understand from your word this great truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to read this verse to you, then we'll get into a lot of verses in the Bible. Mark chapter 8, verse number 15. And he charged them, saying, take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. Now, I had to stop there for a minute. I was like, okay, what in the world? I know what the leaven of, of the Pharisees are. The leaven of the Pharisees is hypocrisy. All right, they're a bunch of hypocrites. What in the world is the leaven of Herod? What was that, and why were they told to be careful, to beware of the leaven of Herod? Well, you have to understand historically the context of what was going on in Israel at the time. There was a lot going on there at the time, and Jesus was a big problem for the Herodians. He was a big problem for the Pharisees, and he was a big problem for the Sadducees. And all three of them got together to destroy or attempt to destroy him. No, and none of them liked each other, but they had a bigger enemy, and that bigger enemy was Christ. And mark it down, friend, there are always, I don't care how many people are out there, we see it on the street and wherever we go, when those people come together, the bigger enemy is always Christ. They can unite around their hatred for Christ. I'm telling you, I've never seen people come, witches and, 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 and all kinds of people come together around their hatred for Jesus Christ and their hatred for the Word of God. So, we, we have an issue here uh, with this, these Herodians. I'm going to explain you some historical context here, kind of from some, some encyclopedias and things like that, just to give you an understanding. And then I'll give you a lot of scripture with it, and then I'm going to show you how it, it kind of relates today. And I hope it all makes sense to you. I was really tired last night. I put it all together. I, I thought about it a lot, but... I put it all together last night, and, you know, it's just, it seemed to make a lot of sense to me that not a lot has changed, but it's a dangerous sect, and you'll, you'll understand as we go here. Maybe, maybe some lights, when I start reading about this, some of these lights will, will kind of turn on for you. Then we'll look at the Herodians, and we'll look at Herod, who he really was, okay? There arose a sect in the days of the birth of Christ, a sect called the Herodians, they followed a man named Herod the king. Herod feigned himself as a messiah of sorts. See, Herod set himself up as a political messiah. A lot of people don't know that. His, his hatred for Christ was that he was like this. He was the king of the Jews. Do you understand that? He was the political king of the Jews. So naturally, he is trying to set up what kind of kingdom? A physical kingdom. What kingdom was Christ coming to set up? A spiritual kingdom, okay? So a spiritual kingdom, just like today, what are we? We're part of what? A spiritual kingdom. Jesus said, if my, if my servants were of this world, right? If my kingdom was of this world, then would my servants what? Fight, right? Now, he's not saying don't be involved in politics at all or don't be involved in, 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 in your country. And don't be, he's not, that's not what he's saying. What he's saying is physically we are not setting up a Christian nation. All right? We're not doing that. 
Some people are. They're Herodians. That's what they're doing. They're, they're Herodians. Okay, so what did, where did Herod do? Herod merged the church and the state, but he brought them. Where do, where do you suppose Herod brought the, and, and I know Israel wasn't technically the church. I guess the church in the wilderness, you could say, and things like that, but not the New Testament local church that we, we find today. We understand the differences there. Old Testament Israel, New Testament church, okay? Difference, big difference. One old covenant, one new covenant, right? We're the new covenant. We're under the new, we're under grace, all right? So, but anyway, who was Herod trying to pull them under? Rome. The Roman government. Herod was the first king. Now, there's many different Herods, okay? So don't get confused. I'm not going to explain all of them to you. I'll do a little bit of research. But Herod, the king, okay, was who the first one was when Christ was born. He was the one that had a great relationship with Rome, all right, and the Roman government, and he wanted his power. Well, who would come, if there was a son that was born that came that was the king of the Jews, what would that do to Herod, the king of the Jews? What would he think that was? An immediate what? Threat. Why is Christ an immediate threat in China? What does he challenge? Their laws, right. He is, Christ is a great affront to all of their tyranny, right? Why did Roger Williams get kicked out of New England? Because liberty is a great what? It is a great front, affront to what? To tyranny. And if you understand the Bible, if you understand the truth of who Christ is, then you understand liberty. And the Herodians didn't only want liberty for those that agreed with them on a political agenda. That's all they wanted. That's it. So he merged so much of, of the religion of Israel, the Jewish rites and everything else. He merged them under a religious political alliance together. And after his death, many people followed Herod, and, and they were called the Herodians, and, he, and they were sort of a spinoff of the Sadducees, okay? They kind of agreed with some of the Sadducees and worked together with them. Okay, so I'll, I'll read you some of the background of them as well. The designation, the Herodians were a designation of a class of Jews that existed in the time of Jesus Christ, evidently, as the name imports, partisans of Herod, but whether of a political or religious description is not easy, because they were both. They were religious and political, both of them. State control. The passage of the New Testament, which refers to the New Testament, which refers to them, are the following. We're going to go through all those verses. From these, it appears that the ecclesiastical authorities of Judea held a council against our Savior, and associating with themselves, the Herodians sent an embassy to him with the express but covert design of ensnaring him in his speech, that thus they might compass his destruction by embroiling him. But what additional difficulty did the Herodians bring? Herod Antipas who was the son of Herod, the king. Herod Antipas was now tetrarch of Galilee and Persia, which was the only inheritance he received from his father, Herod the Great. As tetrarch, as tetrarch of Galilee, he was specific, especially the ruler of Jesus, whose home was in that province. The Herodians then may have been subjects of Herod, whose evidence the priests were desirous of procuring, because theirs would be the evidence of a fellow countryman and a special force, with Antipas as being that of his own immediate subjects. So they had a political alliance, a religious political alliance that came in. You're going to get this in a second here. Herod's relations with Rome were in an unsafe condition. This Herod in the time of Christ, John the Baptist, that Herod. He was a weak prince given to ease and luxury, and his wife's ambition conspired with his own desires to make him strive to obtain from the emperor the title of a king. For this purpose, he took a journey to Rome, but he was banished to Lyons in Gaul. The Herodians may have been favors of his pretensions. If so, they would be partial hearers and eager witnesses against Jesus before the Roman tribunal. So remember, they brought against him, they took him to the Roman, Roman tribunal, right? So here's the Herodians, and they take him, and they charge him in the Roman tribunal so they could put him to death. Why? Because he was a threat to them. Everywhere you find the truth of the, of the Bible preached, the word of God preached, is always a threat to governments that do not believe in liberty and do not hold to liberty. It will always be a threat. Christ is always a threat to them, right? What's the first thing they said? And by what authority do you these things? 
Why? That's power and authority. That's a threat. If the Herodians were a Galilean political party who were eager to procure from Rome the honor of a royalty of Herod, the name of a king, as merely as of courtesy, they were chosen as associates by the Sanhedrin with a special property, propriety. The idea is confirmed by Josephus, it, his mention of a party as the partisans of Herod. The deputation were to feign themselves just men, that is, when, whose sympathies was entirely Jewish and such anti-heathen, they were intimate they were intimate their dislike of paying tribute. So what happened? They, they joined themselves together with Herod, okay, with the Herodians, against Christ, but they were hypocrites. They were nothing but hypocrites. They really didn't follow the Bible. They, are, are they really didn't follow the Old Testament right. They just acted like they did. And, the, and they acted like they were the conservators of Judaism, but they really weren't because they pulled it under Roman power. Herod the Great built a temple. Well, I'll explain to him in a minute, his temple. Anyway, so that's some of the sightings there. So then how does this apply today? The leaven of Herod definitely applies for today. It was said by one preacher this. It says, go and say to that fox, an Edomian by his father, a Samaritan by his mother, this is Herod, a Jew by profession and a heathen by practice. Are you catching that? Kind of like the president we have today and that with the president we've had for the last hundred years probably. Kind of the same thing, right? They'll profess to be Christians, but they're heathens in their life, in their practice. That's just what they are. He had a foxy nature about him, Herod did. That's why Jesus said, go tell that fox. I'm going to explain to you why he called him a fox. Because he was very sly and he had to be to survive. Herod did. And he was even now playing the fox by sending those messengers. See, he sent those messengers to try to trap Jesus. Remember that? And Jesus, those messengers came and said, Herod's going to kill you. And, and Jesus said, go tell that fox that I'm still going to keep doing what, what, what my father wants me to do. And when I'm done, I'm done. American Christians today are looking for a political messiah. That's what they're looking for, most of them. I, I believe many are guilty of the leaven of the, of the Pharisees but, and the leaven of Herod. Some care not for what this man's life consists of, what a leader's life consists of, or how he is, as long as he fulfills the agenda of the religious right. Many of them want an agenda fulfilled, and it doesn't matter who does it. I remember seeing a campaign down in Iowa when I, I helped campaign for a man that, that believed in liberty and everything like that, and I remember these these reformers that jumped on his campaign to help him. They didn't, they didn't stand for liberty really the way that we do. They were in the liberty movement, but they wanted the church to run the state. That's what they wanted. They saw liberty as the church running the state, not the state running the church. That would be tyranny. Well, it's tyranny on both counts. If the church runs the state, tyranny. If the state runs the church, tyranny. It's both tyrannical, and no good comes from either, Amen. only death and bloodshed. They, one thing I've noticed about the, the modern-day Herodians today, the religious right, they will spiritualize and Christianize a man as much as they can in order to fulfill their goals. They will make any man Christian. I am amazed and shocked. You know, here's what I, I have a new way of preaching the gospel here it is. Let's see if this will work, okay? Because so far, according to the religious right, it works all the time. So I think I'll use this. I think we should all use this. How about everybody in America run for office? Because if everybody runs for office in America, everybody gets converted. So if everybody would just run for an office, they're automatically going to be saved. Because that's what every stinking religious right person tells me all the time. They tell me, hey, that guy's saved. That guy's a Christian. That guy's saved. That guy's a Christian. Why? Oh, he ran for office. They all become a Christian when they run for office. What an amazing conversion tool that is. If all of us would just get all of our family members to run for office, they'll automatically be saved. Wouldn't that be something? Do you understand the, the hypocrisy in that? I mean, literally... I watched this man, who is nothing but a modern-day Herod. I watched, I watched this man say that he had never repented in his life. He said it. I don't really think about that like that. 
Me and God, we're good. Right, we got our thing going on. Yeah, he's going to throw you in hell. That's the thing going on. You don't bother being God, okay? It doesn't work that way. All right? But the Herodians favored submitting to the, to, to the Herods and therefore to Rome for political expediency. This support of Herod compromised Jewish independence in the minds of the Pharisees, making it difficult for the Herodians and the Pharisees to unite and agree on anything. But one thing did unite them, opposing Jesus. Herod himself wanted Jesus dead. And the Pharisees had already hatched plots against him. So they joined efforts to achieve their common goal. Turn to Luke 13, 31, please. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. See, the Pharisees were working together with him. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils and do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. I ain't going anywhere. That's what he said. And they, they, they hatched a plot, right? Uh, turn to John chapter 11. Verse number 53. Then from that day forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. They wanted to put him to death. Why? He's a, he's a threat to them. So they all joined forces to achieve their common goal. Many scholars believe that the Herodians looked to Herod as a Messiah, a savior of sorts, who would put the Jewish land in favor with the Roman Empire and bring blessings to them. Jesus' presentation of himself as the Messiah was a threat to the Herodians' attempt to make Herod the influential political power in the land. See, they wanted Herod to be the ultimate power. They wanted him to have all the power in the land. And Jesus, when he came along, he was a Messiah and wait, he's preaching something different here. This is going to endanger our land. This is going to endanger our, our existence with Rome and our, our, our deal that we have with Rome. And Herod to keep the kingdom. In the future, the Bible tells us that many will be deceived by the Antichrist and will view the Antichrist as a Messiah. He will be a political leader as well as a false religious leader, and he will promise peace and prosperity through his political programs. I'm telling you, it is all being set up in the minds of people today, and you have the religious right that are just like dumping this on and pushing this and promoting this because they're trying to set up a kingdom on earth. That's their goal. The Herodians at the time of Jesus were also focused on political goals rather than the eternal goals that Jesus proclaimed. They thought Herod might bring temporary peace politically. But Jesus came to bring us eternal salvation by dying on the cross to pay for our sins. The lesson we learn from the error of the Herodians is that we are not to trust in a man as they trusted in Herod. We are to put our trust in the Lord Jesus and let his will be done in our lives and on the earth. Amen. Now, they, these Herodians, they were kind of a priestly party under the reign of King Herod. It's going to start to remind you of the Republican Party a little bit. The religious right that all these charismatics, all these people that laid hands on Trump and all these people coming together. I mean, it's like they're all singing kumbaya together in their demonic language. And, and it, it's, it's downright scary because all these people are holding hands together. It's like, I don't want to hold hands with any of you people. Because, like, judgment is coming from all this. You got sods and everybody else in your group all holding hands with you and all, and Trump saying, getting up at the national convention, the Republican national convention saying how excited he was. I mean, listen, they don't even care. This is how sad it is. Listen, the religious right backed this man. Do you understand that? They backed this man, and listen to what he did. He stood up with that Peter Thiel guy, the head of PayPal, and he stood up there and said, I'm so glad to hear you clap like that at a Republican National Convention for this homosexual sodomite movement. Right. Do you understand how absolutely incredibly insane that is for people and, and then and then you have charismatics laying hands on this man and christian and bob jones a uh, college university backing him do you understand this wicked man is up there and they're backing his lifestyle they're backing what he's saying 
It's nothing more than the Herodians. It's the leaven of Herod. That's all it is. It is absolutely the leaven of Herod. There is no justify, justification for it. Right, right, which, which will build up and bolster up a movement. Right, the whole thing needs to be done with, but, they, but it's the leaven of Herod. They, want, they don't care. They just want to get along. They want to work out a political deal. It's all about, it's not like liberty, what our Baptist forefathers did. They fought for pure liberty. They did not, they did not compromise any position to do that. They didn't compromise the Bible to do that. They said liberty. Or nothing. So this priestly party under the reign of King Herod and his successors called by the rabbis as adherents of the family of Bothus, whose daughter Miriam was one of the wives of King Herod, and whose sons were successfully made high priests by him. They followed the Sadducees in their opposition to the Pharisees and were therefore often identified with the former. According to the Gospels, their plot, the Herodians' plot, against the life of Jesus was supported by the Pharisees. Wherefore, Jesus warned his disciples, saying, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. See, Herod was trying to set up an earthly kingdom, and all these Jews wanted to set up an earthly kingdom. They wanted their kingdom back. They wanted to return to the glory of the kingdom. That's what they wanted. And Jesus stood in their way. Because a work of God was starting, and they could see it, and that's why they shut John the Baptist down. So this shows that these Herodians represented a religious party. The Herodians have been omitted altogether, and the Pharisees alone are represented by the enemies of Jesus in different portions of Scripture. Okay, so uh, who are these people? Number one, the Herodians were politically driven. They're politically driven people. The Herodians were fiercely loyal to the state of Rome and patriotism to reach their intended goals. What do we have today? Fiercely loyal and patriotic. Don't question anything. You're just not a paid, you're, you're not a patriot if you question things. If you question whether we should go bomb Syria, well, you're just not a patriot. Because don't you know Christians are supposed to bomb everybody? Right? You, don't you think it's pretty, yeah, especially if they're brown, right? Don't, don't, you, don't, you, don't you think it's a little bit off and a little bit sad that when a guy like Ron Paul stands on, on, on the floor of Congress and he says, and he talks about, um, uh, the golden rule, he's laughed basically out of there. That's By the way, that same thing was said by Roger Williams to the Puritans. Yep. He said, you should do unto others as you would have them do it. You shouldn't be beating people for what they believe or killing them for that. You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be treating people like that. You wouldn't want anybody treating you like that. And the Puritans said, well, we, we practice the golden rule. We'd want you to beat us and halfway and hang us if if uh, we were bad. Bunch of liars. Yeah. Turn to Matthew chapter twenty-two, please. See, these Herodians, modern-day Herodians, are the same. But these Herodians, what are they? What were they trying to do? They always mix the church and the state. They always mix this together. And they tried to catch him in Matthew chapter 22, verse number 16. And they sent unto him, verse number 16, they sent unto him with their disciples, unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. And neither, neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the purse of men. So they're buttering him up, right? They're false flattery right here. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Now, Brother Finney covers this in one of his book, books. Brother Finney, which booklet is that? I know it's God Betrayed, but one of the booklets cover it too. Yep, yep, render unto God, right. In that booklet, he covers that answer. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness. Who did he know? He knew they were Herodians. He knew the leaven of Herod. He knew what they were doing, and he's like, I know what they're doing. Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? 
show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, whose is the image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. And when they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. See, they wanted a clash between Jesus and Caesar. By the way, there's always been a clash between Jesus and Caesar. There always will until the end. Right? It's just, remember what they said. Remember what the Jewish people said? We have no king but Caesar. Right. They sought to use the state against Christ to crush the opposition. Where have we heard that before? We heard that in the New England colonies in America. They used the power and the force of the state to push out the Baptists and to push out Roger Williams, to push out John Clark, to push out Obadiah Holmes, to push out those people. Why? Because they wanted that shining city on a hill. They wanted, the, they wanted Augustine's city of God. Right? Or the occultists call it the New Atlantis. Same thing either way. Same goal, just a different way to get to it. Right? All the time that Christ was preaching a spiritual kingdom, the Herodians along with Herod were attempting to build a physical kingdom on earth. He was a direct affront to them. Just like, why do you think the, the message of liberty, like the Baptist battle for liberty, and they, why do you think that those messages are not heard today in history? Why do you think that history is not there? Why do you think the history of the First Amendment is not, people don't know really how we got it? Why do you think that is? Because of this. They don't want it out there. They don't want that history out. They don't want the truth to be told about it because they are setting up their own kingdom. They are setting up a kid. They're trying to usher in a kingdom. Herod the king had built a big, beautiful temple in order to make himself like Solomon 2.0. Okay, this, Herod had built himself a big temple. See, he tried to make, he, think about this, okay? Who comes along after Herod builds his temple? Jesus. So Herod built this big, glamorous, wonderfully huge temple and got a following from it. And then who shows up? Jesus. And what did that do? Took the emphasis off the temple. The Herodians followed Herod's allegiance to Rome in order to keep their power. We see it today with the religious right. They'll push the war machine and anything else to help keep their dominionist dreams alive. They see Christianity must destroy Islam. Albert Pike talked about it. World War III. The Masons, they talked about it. Mark chapter 3, verse number 6. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Rhodians against him how they might destroy him. That's right, to destroy Jesus was their goal. He was a threat to them. The religious right is the same way today. The leaven of Herod lives on. We saw the Puritans do it in New England. They sanitize all the evil of, of, of Donald Trump to get him in office. Listen, anybody could have ran against Hillary and defeated her, though. I'm sorry, anybody could have. It didn't matter who it was. Because that many people really hated her. I mean, I can think of a lot better character uh, people that you could have ran against her. Okay? But everybody hated Hillary. Because nobody wanted to listen to that voice for four years. <laughs> I know I didn't want to. Right? Like I said, it, uh, that's the leaven of Herod. The Pharisees and Sadducees were more afraid of Jesus than they hated each other. The same goes today. The religious right, they're more afraid of the Muslims than they are the wicked and corrupt ruler. They're more afraid of the Muslims than they are. Which, listen, I'm more afraid of that Congress and Senate than I am of Muslims any day. And that president. And that Supreme Court. You do realize that, that, well, I'll get to that. Next, Herod built them a glorious temple. They, like the, like the favors of the state and their religious leaders today, the leaven, they love it. See, Israel, all those people, the Herodians, 
they wanted to ride that political tide up of Herod building that temple and restoring their sacrifices, restoring their, pre their preeminence in the area, and eventually their kingdom. So he, he built them a nice, huge temple. It was a place of security and importance in the Roman government that they had. What's the Bible say? Jesus was the chief cornerstone. John chapter 2, verse number 18. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. You imagine Jesus is walking into their big, glamorous temple, right? And he walks in and he says that to them. And then Jesus tells him, you see all these buildings around you? They're all going to be destroyed. All of them are going to be destroyed. But destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up. Do you understand? Do you understand what that did to their mindset and how much hate that, that, that raised and ire that raised against him? Because he came telling the truth and his message was spiritual. And what did he say? These things are spiritual. And they could not receive them. Then said the Jews, 40 and 6 years was this temple in building. Wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his mind. Do you understand the war that was going on there? You had a physical kingdom and you had a spiritual kingdom. And they were at war right there. There was a war going on right there. Same thing today. 46 years, right? 46 chromosomes, right? Yep. 23 and 23. The same as Solomon's temple, by the way, was 23 and 23 on both sides. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into that, but anyway, we don't have time to go through that. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said unto them, and they believed the scriptures and the word which Jesus had said. But you know what? The leaven of Herod lives on today because with this 501c3 tax-exempt status and incorporation status, all this, whatever the state says goes, as long as they can keep their buildings. As long as that, you know what? Brother Finney and I have talked to so many pastors. You know, the one thing that's so important to them, can I keep my building? Well, what if you couldn't? What if you couldn't? What's that? Yeah, it would destroy their church. That's right, because the church is their building. Well, friend, we can meet anywhere. But they will not lose their million-dollar corporation, their million-dollar assets, or their $8 million asset, or their $3 million asset, or their $2 million assets. They will not lose them. Why? Because they're the Herodians. And Herod made a deal with Rome, and they're going to keep that deal. And you know what? Some of these guys jumped on board with Donald Trump because he said, we got to look at this 501c3 thing. we got to look at these things. Yeah, just one part of it. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Why is that? <laughs> right. They they signed up for a scheme that they had they didn't have to. And their exemption their their exemption they didn't need to sacrifice everything for it. But the leaven of Herod lives on, doesn't it? As long as they can have their big buildings. as long. But, you know, here's the other side of it, though. As long as they can continue to run their businesses. Because their churches today are no longer churches. They are businesses. They want to be able to operate as a business. That's why they have daycare centers. Coffee shops and daycare centers and, and uh, I mean, all kinds of different businesses. You'd be surprised. Right, exactly. They run, they run, well, properties and camps and schools and everything else. And they want to keep that. And as long as they make a deal with Herod, they can keep it. Yes, they could. But as long as they can run their nonprofit corpse and treat the church like a business, they'll do what Caesar says. And the leaven of Herod lives on. When Jesus taught us the most important thing was his body and that he was the chief cornerstone, Ephesians 2.20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. 
These things are spiritual. So what if they did tell you you couldn't have that building or they took it away from you? If people don't show up to church wherever you meet because they don't like where you meet, they don't love God anyway. How about that one? How about you throw it right back in their face? You don't love God anyway. You sorry lost convert. You need to be saved. You religious hypocrite. Mm-hmm. That's the leaven of the Pharisees right there. That's all that is. Bunch of hypocrites. Care more about a building of brick and mortar than they do about anything else. Don't show up. Don't come. We don't want you here anyway. I know a lot of pastors won't say that. I wouldn't want people here that cared more about a building than they did anything else. Oh. But see, they wanted an earthly kingdom and not a spiritual kingdom. Beware of the leaven of Herod. The Rhodians were a powerful political sect that wanted rights merely for them and to control. That's what they wanted. As long as they can build their Christian empire and force people to worship God according to the way they see fit. There's a very dangerous thing going on in America today. And I'm telling you, this religious test that's going on in America today, it's being tested out on Muslims to see how far they can get away with it, but it's coming to you. Do you understand that? Now, there's a right way to deal with, with tyranny and a wrong way to deal with tyranny. Let me tell you what they're doing. If you think this is all about Islam, you're crazy. Islam is no threat to white people in America. You know who the threat is to white overlords in America and, and the Congress and the Senate and the House and the President? You. You are. You are a threat. Biblical Christianity has always been a threat to tyranny. This, there is a game being played to build up the ire and the hate to destroy Islam, to wipe it off the face of the earth. And if you want to do that to accomplish that, you just get a bunch of white people mad about something and they will demolish and destroy everything. I'm just telling you, folks, that's how it is. Look at history, you can see it. They are vicious and they will destroy everything. That's what they want. They want you to destroy everything. They want you to hate, they want you to fight, they want you to war. Are there radical Islam, uh, Islamists? Yeah, they're the ones that work for the government. <laughs> hey, listen to me. I'm going to make some people mad here, but I'm going to say it again. The only Muslims I ever see make something go boom are the ones that, that, that end up working for the military. There you go. That's all I ever see. Search it out. Look it out yourself. The only ones that ever blow anything up are the ones that had something to do with the military. They're ex-military. They worked with this one. Oh, the FBI has been trailing these guys for like two years. Yeah, set the whole thing up and set back and watch it go boom. Right. And be like, we caught some terrorists. Yeah. No, you made some. Right. <laughs> Nobody likes that inconvenient truth. Go listen to um, uh, what's, what the judge on Fox News. Go to, go to YouTube. Look up a video. Um, that What's that judge's name? Help me out. Napolitano. Judge Napolitano, go listen to a video he did two or three years ago, maybe four years ago now, and he talks about every FBI plot that was foiled. Every single one of them, the FBI plot or of terrorism that was foiled, they were all a part of. They had something to do with. They aided and abetted it. They built it up. They, they made those people want to do that. Yeah. Go listen to it. And this is not a fundamental Baptist Christian, okay? What's that? I don't know if he's a sodomite or not. But what he said is true. And it's factual reports. You got all these people. Are you really, listen, people, are you really scared of Muslims? Are you really scared of Muslims? Seriously. I'm not. I'm not. They need to be saved just like every other heathen does. 
just like every Catholic does out there. Man, you want to talk about somebody that's vicious, talk about the guy that's got trillions of dollars over at the Vatican. Nobody's scared of that guy, and that guy's the one walking through every country, a stinking pedophile, doing all kinds of wickedness that you can't even imagine. And nobody cares about that guy. He just strolls in and strolls out, and he's a trillionaire. Right. Who's the worst terrorist? 4,000 accounts of pedophilia in St. Paul. Who's the real terrorist? It's so foolish. All right, I'm, I'm just starting to get heated up. You, you ready? I'll get, get. Okay, I'm, I'm just getting started. The clock's winding right now. That little... Did you give me some water? Thanks. I'm just, I don't want that. You drank out of that. I don't want that. I'm going to put this down for a minute. Keep you guys here for another two hours. I'm only on point two. Step away from the sugar, Jacob. Step away from the sugar, Jacob. Or the high fructose corn syrup. It ain't even sugar. What is this stuff? It's not even sugar. <laughs> Tastes good, though. <laughs> All right, here we go. Next, number three, four, whatever number it is. The leader's immorality does not matter or his character. Mark 6, 16, but when Herod heard thereof, he said, It is John whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. Now, there's a reason Herod said that, by the way. Why did Herod say that? Because Herod didn't want to admit that Jesus was the Messiah. People think, he, no, he knew that wasn't John the Baptist risen from the dead. Why do you think Jesus said he was a fox? You old fox. You old sly fox. You know who I am. Your daddy tried to kill me. You know who I am. He knew exactly who he was. And he knew he wasn't John the Baptist. Because, by the way, he was a sect of the Sadducees. He didn't even believe in the resurrection of the dead. So he already, he already knew. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Uh-oh. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him and would have killed him, but she could not. All right, so this Jezebel got really ticked because he called her a whore and said, you can't marry her, and she got mad about that, and he called him a whoremonger, and he got mad about that, so they threw him in prison. Sound about right? For Herod feared John knowing that he was a just man and a holy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. And when a, con and when a convenient day was come, and when a convenient day was come, that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains and chief estates of Galilee. And when the daughter of, said, of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod and, and them that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, I will give it to thee. And he swore unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee into the half of my kingdom. And she went forth and said unto her mother, What shall I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king and asked, saying, I will thou give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceeding sorrow, yet for his own sake and for their sakes which sat with him, he would not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison. He was a man of wicked character. He stole his brother's wife, and yet the Herodians continued to be loyal to him. But look at the president. Many voted in office the same immoral and wicked past. His wife as well, playboy. A man that openly said while he's running for office, I've never repented of anything. His wife, his wife's nude and playboy. And by the way, Bob Jones was taking a picture. Right behind him was the picture of her on the cover of Playboy. You can't even make it up. Donald Trump, a man that said he never repented. Sly old fox, just like Herod. A man that sold himself to summon the liberty movement. 
I don't know how. I'm sitting there listening to the same people that were for Ron Paul and everything, and then they're, they're, and they're all like, make America great again. And they're running around with that cheesy hat. Oh, sorry, I don't mean to get on the hat again, but the hat is awful. No offense, trucker guys, but the red trucker hat you pick up at a gas station for like 99 cents that he probably sold for like 20 bucks or something. It's awful. Oh, it was awful. It had to be meant to be awful. The red hat was awful. Do you have a red hat? Do you have that hat? Okay. It just didn't look like a billionaire would ever wear that hat in a million years. It's just part of the psyop is all it was. But anyway, so he went so so you got guys like Alex Jones, right? Who went from promoting Ron Paul to Donald Trump and turned into a fascist neocon right in front of your eyes. And I'm like, is anybody paying attention to this at all? And the thing was, no, it's anything but Hillary. Anything but Hillary. But I'm going to show you that there ain't a nickel's bit of difference between the two anyway. A man who tweeted that Obama had no business going into Syria without congressional approval then does the same thing. I, I, I'm not kidding you. You can go down and look at a list of like, I have them right here, of 30 tweets that, 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 that uh, Donald Trump said about Obama in 2013. There's no reason to bomb Syria. We should stay out of it. We shouldn't. What kind of an incompetent fool goes in and bombs Syria like that? Who should do that? You should stay out of Syria. We don't have the money for it. You shouldn't be doing everything. Every single tweet. I know, I'm going to read that to you, too. Hillary said that his words are the exact as Hillary's. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> then Sean Hannity tweets four years ago about Obama bombing Syria, then golfing. And Trump does the same exact thing the next day. He bombs Syria and goes golfing on Friday. I'm not kidding you. It's like you could fast forward it, and it's the same exact thing. Somebody's like, what is this, deja vu or something? <laughs> like, no, this is just the curse of Twitter. <laughs> Whatever you write down might come back to get you. <laughs> Luke chapter 12, verse number 1. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, and so much that they trod upon one another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. You know, Jesus called Herod a fox for a reason, because he professed to be Jewish but lived a hypocritical heathen life. So then you have all the charismatic leaders that lay hands on Trump and the religious right that have embraced him. Uh, James Dobson's like, yeah, he prayed the prayer. Yeah, they all do. So do Obama was a Christian too, but I never hear the religious right touting Obama's Christianity. They just never would. But he said he was a Christian, and there was as much evidence for him as there was for Trump. Actually, there was more evidence for him. <laughs> he did. Jeremiah Rice Church. No, and then when he tells you Norman Vincent Peale was his pastor, Donald Trump. Yeah. It's a great sermon, Norman. Norman Vincent, I didn't want it. You just didn't want it. What was it about? You just didn't want it to end. I don't know what it was about, but you didn't want it to end. It was really, it was really good. It was great. It was tremendous sermon, tremendously wonderful sermon. Tremendous and wonderful sermon. What do you talk about? Tremendously wonderful things. Okay, Donald, thanks. It was all just positive. He just left there wanting to hear more. Good, good people. Great. A BB gun with a, in the Crystal Cathedral, you'd be all set. So let me ask you a question. How in the world can all these Christians of the religious right be supporting a man and supporting the same man, by the way, who says he's going to be different, who said he was the outside, he wasn't. Okay, let me help you with something, okay? You don't get a billion dollars without being connected to the New World Order, okay? You don't make a billion dollars without being connected to the New World Order. That is impossible. 
Okay, it is impossible to make a billion dollars and not be connected. It just doesn't happen. They will kill you. Doesn't happen. So, he goes off and bombs Assyria. Now, let me ask you, is that a Christian thing to do? You just go bomb people? Well, they, they gas their own people. So now I'm going to go bomb them. Well, I'm just going to get to that, actually. But there is no reason to bomb a sovereign nation like that. Beware of the leaven of Herod, though, because all these people are going to come on board of this. Because they're scared of Islam more than they are of the dictators that are in the White House, the Congress, and the Senate. So 4,000 babies are killed every day in America. Yet we can take some kind of moral high ground in bombing Syria for them, say, for them gassing 25 kids? Seriously, how much hypocrisy is that? Really? You spent $59 million on 59 missiles, a million bucks a piece, right? I know you could save $60 million. How about you shut down all those abortion clinics and say no more killing innocent lives in America? It wouldn't cost you a million dollars. A missile. Not a shot would need to be fired. Now, I'm against imperial orders, obviously, and a phony king that writes executive orders, but how come they can write an executive order for everything else but that? Don't you find that a little fascinating? Don't you find it a little hypocritical? Don't you think we ought to take care of Chicago before we take care of Syria? Don't we have enough in our own backyard to clean up instead of going over to Syria and starting a war? What's the matter, Donald? The poll, the poll number's too hard for you? Too much, too much uh, truth being put out there, so you got to go bomb somebody to, get, to unite the country again? So you just start killing people? Which, by the way, proves that he helped ISIS anyway. But ISIS was created by the CIA, which was created by the federal government, which is, we created ISIS. Mm -hmm. See? Right? So the bombing in Syria, what did that do? That helped ISIS. Because ISIS is the boogeyman. There's always a boogeyman. Okay? Some of you may be confused, but... Well, We'll help you figure it out, okay? <laughs> There's always a boogeyman every time, okay? It, it was the war on drugs. It was the war on terror, okay? The war on terror was what? It was Al-Qaeda. Remember how Al-Qaeda was coming for us? What was after Al-Qaeda? See, it was uh, the Taliban. What happened to those guys? Man, they had the best Nike shoes and, and brand new Ford trucks i ever seen in my life, or Chevy trucks. $100 Jordans, <laughs> running around with them out in the, uh, yeah, because, you know, people with, like, khakis and, and $100 Jordans are running around the desert <laughs> with brand new guns and big old huge trucks that are brand new from America. <laughs> I'm a terrorist. And where'd they get those shoes? I ain't even seen those. So what happened to the Taliban? They went somewhere. Then we funded the rebels, the Syrian rebels and the other rebels, and then they turned it, then they transformed into ISIS. ISIL. And then ISIS. Are you starting to follow this? No, probably not. Okay, you, you'll figure it out. So let me get this straight. Let me ask you a question about these Herodians here. A Republican judge says your body is not your own when it comes to health care, and they have the right to force you to pay for it. But your body is your own when you want to murder your baby. We have an immoral and wicked leader who names the name of Christ like Herod. Like Herod did. He built a temple and dedicated it to Apollo. You ever, you ever seen Donald Trump's uh, Louis XIV uh, suite? Penthouse suite? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yep. The only reason he bombed Syria was to distract from the garbage going on here in America. How Christian is it to bomb another nation's sovereign borders when you're killing your own babies, the most innocent life? But the religious right, they see Trump as a man who can help them fulfill their political agenda of setting up a kingdom in the world, ushering in the kingdom. 
You have Chicago, a cesspool of murder and corruption, yet we're worried about Syria and its citizens. Citizens. You know, back in the election, here's, 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 here's what I can tell you. There's not a nickel's worth of difference, a dime's bit of difference between the two, the two candidates that just ran. After a weekend's worth of Republicans daring any and all potential 2016 Democrat candidates to take a stand on Syria, Hillary Clinton has spoken up. Secretary Clinton supports the president's efforts to enlist the Congress in pursuing a strong and targeted response to the Assad regime's horrific use of chemical weapons. An aide told Politico this evening, previously Team Clinton veteran Paul Beglia said, we can only have one Secretary of State at a time, and I don't think folks should attack her for letting Secretary Kerry lead the department as he now runs. But they're on the same side after all. She was going to bomb Assad too. Why? Well, let me give you a hint. It's about the money. What, do, what, what, what currency does Syria use? Okay, so let me give you, any time you go against the Federal Reserve, they're going to drop some democracy on you. We give you a little bit of liberty and a little bit of freedom. Okay? And that's what they did. That's what they're doing to him. Yep, yep. Still looking for those weapons of mass destruction. Right. And for all the evils, look at this. I want you to look at this verse here. Because there's a problem here today. There's, I, you know what I always hear from people? As soon as you say something about Donald Trump, well, aren't we supposed to pray for him? Man, I didn't hear you all praying for Obama. I didn't hear all you people praying for Obama. Be like, aren't you praying for Obama? I never got reminded every time I said something about Obama. Are you praying for Obama? Are you praying for Obama? Bunch of hypocrites. What does the Bible say, though, in Luke chapter 3, verse number 19? But Herod the Tetrarch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, and look, and for all the evils which Herod had done. It wasn't just his relationship with the fornicating relationship that he was in. What did John the Baptist do? He reproved him for all the evils which Herod had done. He called him to repentance. But these people today, they don't want you to bring those things out. They don't want you to talk about those things. For all the evils which Herod had done, his revelings, his debaucheries, his murders, all which John in great faithfulness and with much freedom told him and rebuked him for. Herod had had a particular respect for him and had often had him with him. So he brought him in to listen to him. But he wasn't going to follow him. He wasn't going to obey him. But John the Baptist rebuked him for everything that he had done. And I'll tell you what, the last thing people wanted really to happen with this election, with this, with this president here, and it's the same thing as the, the religious right, and the same thing, of the le it's the leaven of Herod all over again. They don't want you to talk about those things. They don't want you to talk about because when you start comparing apples to apples, you figure out real quick they're both rotten. And then we have a, a, a Congress, a House, a Senate, a, and a Supreme Court that is absolutely wicked and corrupt. That does not follow the founding documents or the principles of liberty. Absolutely not. Right. And we have, and we have the religious right today that is going to push. Just like, just like George Bush came to them and said, you know what? You need to stay the course, he told them. He met with all those, those fundamentalist Baptists and those fundamentalist leaders, and he asked them to push the mantra, stay the course in Iraq. And they did. But one thing that people don't realize, Herod was a murdering, wicked man. Do you know that tyranny... To re religious tyranny 
usually happens more by a Republican than a Democrat? Who was in who was in charge when IBT was raided? Brother Finney? Bush. Bush was the Christian president. Oh, he prayed with the man and led him to the Lord. And he was a Christian. Well, he signed the order to have, have IBT raided. Yep. We know they hate Baptists. <laughs> but you know, what's that? Right, they all want a new world order. That's what they want. So see, all these people are working together for the same thing. And they thought Trump was going to be some kind of savior. They thought Trump was going to, and people are saying, oh, Trump turned on the liberty movement. No, he didn't. Trump was never part of the liberty movement. <laughs> what, are you kidding me? He never was part of it. You got Trump, that's right. He never was part of it. He was never part of that liberty. He never wanted liberty. He was always for, listen to what he said, oh, the Christian people are being persecuted across the world, so we're going to do something about it. What does that mean? You're going to kill Muslims because of it? You know? It's a shell game, folks. That's what it is. But Jesus is going to put it down one day. Because a true spiritual kingdom is always at war with this physical kingdom that is here always at war with it. Herod was, was, was at war with him and had to put him down. Herod was a wicked man. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that, yeah that, I think that's the same Herod. Yeah, the one that killed the... There's, there's more than one Herod. There's Herod, the king that died, by the way, who tried to kill Jesus and all the babies. And then there was Herod that did put Jesus on trial. And then there was another Herod, and I think he killed Peter and... No, that was this Herod, yeah, that killed Peter and, or tried to kill Peter. Tried to kill Peter, killed James, the Lord's, bro uh, the Lord's brother, I believe, and then he died. What did he do? He made himself a god. Right? Yeah, they said, this man speaks as a god. It's the voice of a God. That's right. And what happened? Worms ate him. So understand this, that nothing's new. This same old scheme has been played to merge that church state together, the religious right, the coalitions, all the work, and it's going to end up in tyranny. That's where it ends up, folks. It doesn't end up good. So anyway, the leaven of Herod is there. It's real. It's, it's a political compromise with Rome. Or the government, and that's what we have today, a political compromise with the government. These religious organizations, these churches are trying to make a political compromise, and it's not working out well. And it won't. In the end, they're going to compromise everything and have to compromise everything they believe in to fulfill it. Father, Lord, we pray you bless. Now bless this food to our bodies. Bless the time we have together. Lord, thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.